so today I thought I'd show you how to do a quick, easy, distressed type background uh, with just two colours and white. I've done this in my journal and I'm going to make it into a journal page but I thought it'd be quite fun to try and see how it goes on to scrum craft card and see if we get a different effect. It may or may not work but we'll give it a go. So I've got some craft card, it's about 250-300 GSM, it's got a reasonable body to it. I've got Payne's Grey, uh, Dale Rowney uh, Graduate Acrylics, I've got PPO, High Viscosity, Buff Titanium Opaque Paint and I've got PBO Studio Acrylics Gesso. I've also got this little roller which is actually for rollering the seams when you've been wallpapering in between your, your two seams of your or your seam between your two strips of wallpaper to make it lie flat you get these little rollers. Now this has been quite badly treated because I've used it for paint quite a lot so it got very caked up with paint and I decided I was going to have to clean it because it wasn't turning around anymore. The paint had got so it was so built up it had formed a ridge and it wasn't turning so I had to clean it because uh, I actually like um, the fact that you do actually get different effects if you've got paint built up on your on your brayers or rollers. This was only sort of two three pound from a DIY shop so they aren't very expensive at all. It's quite a nice little handle and the thing that I do like is if I'm putting paint on into my journal I can get right up to the edge. No matter which way round I go I can get right up to the edge because this bit doesn't get in the way which it does with some brayers. So I've got this craft card and I've got this. When I cleaned it, some little chunks from the edges when I was pulling the paint off, dried paint off, came away and I thought, oh, right, ruined that. Actually, it gives extra texture, so I don't mind, so I've pulled a few more bits off. Um, I might actually sort of rough it up a little bit round there as well. So, we'll start with, what shall we start with? We'll start, I'm doing this on my glass mat so I can clean it up quite quickly. And I'm actually, this is an old pa wallpaper scrap, which I'm going to brayer off on the back if I want to clean my, my, bra my roller. I'll call it my brayer. Um, so I'm going to leave that to the side so if I want to brayer any off, I can do. I tend to work with very small amounts on my glass mat because you don't want a lot of gesso, paint, whatever on your roller and you almost brayer it off before you start so that there's not so much on there so roll it out on your glass mat so that it's just a little bit and then you're just going to randomly I'm saying randomly, I tend to work in go sort of right to left, horizontal and vertical basically you can see that you, you get the ridges from the distressed edge of the brayer. But once you've got a lot of layers on, you don't actually notice those so much. And you can turn it round. So I can go this way. Pick a bit more. And then I can turn it over and go, go that way. I always tend to concentrate my first sort of bits of brayering I tend to go to the right and the bottom that then you get the majority of your paint going to the right and bottom of your panel or your journal page or whatever because then that builds up the texture because your gesso and your paint build up texture and then the, the following layers build on them and that's how you get the distressed look. Don't worry about these lines. By the time you've got to the end you won't notice them at all 
and sometimes I'm pressing, pressing quite hard, sometimes I'm being quite light when I pray, brayer on. like that line there but I can always hide it with subsequent layers so I want to just blend these lines here in a bit so I'm going to go next to them just to with quite lightly so I don't get lines again so you see the blending more I also like to come in from the edges so that the edges pick up a bit of gesso or paint and then it also almost frames your piece. So we've got a nice lot of texture going on there. I'll just bring it onto this piece of paper just to get any surplus gesso off. I'm going from pale to dark so I'm now going to my buff titanium again onto my craft mat, my glass mat and rolling off if you can see that rolling off quite a lot of the paint so it's just a thin application and then very lightly go over and you'll see it picks it up in places and not in others going in at the edges again because I like the edges to have a reasonable amount on I don't tend to go diagonally you could do it's just me I quite like the fact that if I am going to get lines from my roll that they go in a sort of grid formation that's just me I, d I do like a grid even if it's not really showing up very much I do I do like it to be there um, but you could you could go diagonally I just tend to always go as I say horizontally and vertically and where I think I've got a line from this chunky edge of my roller just add sort of quite a bit of paint almost by dabbing your roller on with quite a bit of, and then it'll pick up little nuggets of quite intense pain, pain, paint and don't worry if you get bits like that it's absolutely fine you can make it into a feature so you see we're getting a little bit more paint built up got a little bit of an area there where it's got a bit of a line so I'm just going to go over it so it isn't such a line the corners a little bit more so I like the corners to have a bit of a bit more colour <clears throat> right I'm picking up quite a bit of colour now because this is a definite line and I don't like it so if you concentrate on that and go over that with a quite a lot of paint on your roller, it will. That's it, that's got rid of it. I've got another one here. So I'm going to go over with a fair bit of paint. And it is very random and you get what you get because it's just how your paint goes on your um, your card but I like the excitement of having 
an unknown effect. Right. So that is... It's got quite a lot of visual texture because we've actually got three layers because the craft shows at the bottom, then we've got the white gesso and then we've got the uh, buff titanium. I'll just quickly wipe my mat down. Very quickly. I want a, a bit more dramatic black and if I put my Payne's Grey and my puff, Buff Titanium I'll get a sort of a muted grey which I don't want. I want a bit more of a, a darker grey. Normally I would spritz this paint with water and pick it up but for quickness I'll just mop it up with a baby wipe. And don't throw away your used baby wipes because they've, if they've got acrylic paint on them um, you can dry them out and use them for collage fodder. They, they do make very, very nice collage fodder. Dried out, stitched on, painted on, whatever. So keep those and just dry them out. I just put them in a pile and they dry fairly quickly. So I've got a clean mat again dry it a little. All right, to come back with our panel. I'll just give it a very, very quick blast. So it's more or less dry. It's a little tacky, but it's more or less dry. And then we'll go in with our Payne's Grey. Now a very small amount to set off with and brayer it out onto your glass mat. And I'm going very, very lightly, hardly pressing, just sort of gliding the roller over the... Over the um, Card. I'm going to go in from the edges because that will frame the panel of card. And can you? I don't know if you can see yet because we haven't built up much Payne's Grey, but. Hopefully you can see it's clinging to the raised areas of the gesso and the paint. So it's picking up more in some areas than others. So I'll go with another little bit. Brayer it out on my mat so that my brayer is equally coated. And then again, very lightly. And what I do is... I turn my brayer around, I go one way and then the other. So I'm, I'm going here with it that way, then I turn it over and then you don't get such a definite line. So you see it's picking it up in places, more places than others. And we can also go the other way as well. It is a case of building it up. Mixed media is all about the layers and building up your layers sometimes takes a little bit of time but it's worth it. Right now I'm going a little bit harder because I'm just showing you that if you get a blob on your roller and it transfers to your page it doesn't matter. You can accentuate that little bit with more paint and make it a feature. So I've got quite a little blob there, but I'm 
I just accidentally picked up a little bit too much of the Payne's Grey. So what I've done, I've done that again and made it into a feature. Somebody somewhere along the way, as I've been learning mixed media and various techniques, said, and I can't think who it was, if you make a mistake, turn it into a feature, then it looks intentional. Now I've got another little bit over here where I've got too much. I wasn't wanting a dark area over there, but I'm going to add a lot more here then it looks intentional. So we're getting there. You can see the three different colours showing through. The craft card, the gesso and the buff titanium as well as the Payne's Grey. Right, keep rolling it out till it's even on my roller. I need a bit more here because I've got this blob. And I want a little bit more in the corner so it looks intentional. So I'm going to go over quite a bit there. And it, it is a gradual thing. You're better doing it gradually. But as I've just shown, if you make a mistake, you can actually hide it. got a little bit here and I can just I can see there's a line from my roller so I'm just going to go over that quite a bit with the dark and it makes it look as if it's a feature again and you can have this as dark or as pale as you want oh I've got these chunky bits which were the unintentional bits out of my ruler and they, they do sometimes cause me a problem a little bit because they, they show up. not loving that little bit there it's got the s marks from the edges of the roller uh, but I can if I was doing this as say, a journal page I could put say my lady here and obviously a lot more on there but I could cover it up if you completely hate it put a lot lot more paint onto your brayer and go over and over so it makes it really really dark and covers it up let's see if I can blend it in yeah it's blending it a bit moment now the other way and that'll blend it a little bit more. So you can go as dark as you want. I quite like it at this stage because I've got some of the white still showing, I've got the buff titanium but I've still got the craft card at the base showing. Um, what you can do, let me just find a suitable stamp, I wasn't going to do this, but I'll show you. Now you would wait till this is dry. This isn't dry, so I'll have to be very... I'll just quickly dry it. Yeah, that's nearly dry. I'll have to be very careful, but you can use a stamp to... I do quite a lot of what I call freestyle stamping. I don't use a block. 
just pick it up. This is an Indigo Blue um, Collector's Edition and it's just letters, random letters. I absolutely love it, I use it loads as you can see because the backs are very very gungy. Be careful you don't get it on the edges because you get lines and this is Ranger Archival Ink which will be waterproof when it's dry to get this the right way up and you can add interest to areas say like this one that have got a bit of a problem I just doesn't always show and I will clean my stamping soap and water immediately because if it's picked up any paint it could ruin my stamp I'm just pressing really hard because it needs to go through the texture so I'm adding some interest and that's blending out the fact that you you have the the lines and the big blob it makes it look intentional I'm going across here as well just random stamping in areas I've got the side there I'm a big believer in having things coming in from the edges I did a class once with an abstract artist and he said don't do formatting don't do things at the edges to frame it we don't do formatting I'm sorry I can't remember his name but I do formatting I like formatting I like things coming in from the edges I like a frame I'm not such an abstract artist I do some abstract things but I probably ignore all the rules um, that you're supposed to do that's me I do what I do I do me so here we are you've got a very distressed interesting not humongous amounts of texture but textured background once that is completely dry you could also dip it into watered down distress ink or you could sprinkle on some walnut ink powder and spritz it and it'll move but it does need to be dry first uh, and then that will add another layer I'll do probably do that and then come back and show you what we've got so here we are we've got our background I did add a little bit of Brayadon Distress uh, Vintage Photo and then just activated it with a little bit of water um, it's not made a lot of difference but it's just given another layer and another level to the colours I'm quite happy with that now but I think just so I can show you if you want to lighten it again what you can do you can either use your gesso or your paler colour we'll try gesso because it will show up a little bit more so we've got spray it out on our glass mat again and we'll just lightly go over turning it round so that I don't get my lines from the edges of my brayer my roller again I'll go in quite a bit heavier now it's lightening it up and you can keep going with as many layers as you want going heavier you can see I um, get the ridges from the edge of my roller but it's picking up the texture from the paint and 
gesso that's already there. And it's lightening it again. So I need to get rid of that. As I say, just keep building it up with very, very thin layers. just earlier said I don't go diagonal I'm going diagonal so that I break up the lines from the edge of my brayer And I know I'm covering up the stamping and everything else, but that's what mixed media is. It is all about the layers. A little bit more. And your gesso will pick up the colour from your distress um, inks because they're water reactive and there is moisture in your gesso it will pick up the colours but that's quite nice because it ages your gesso is looking like an old wall which with the uh, plaster and peeling paint which is what I wanted. Now if I can find my right brush You can also have, this is quite a stiff, I call them my glue brushes because I just use them for glue. You can pick up, if you've got problem areas, you can pick up a bit of paint, dab majority of it off. You can even use a cloth to dab majority off and just flick areas where you think there's a bit of a problem and you want to pick up more texture and get rid of the the problem area so can you see it's picking up more of the texture so this that was a bit of a line can be got rid of a little bit you sort of drag it out so that it it isn't such a line anymore and it highlights the texture that you've got with all your layers of paint and everything else but there is hardly any paint on my brush 
it's more or less all worked off. I've still got a little bit of a line there. So I'll go again. So I'm going quite, whoops, do have to hang on to your paper. I'm going in with quite a lot of dry brushing now around this area, which was a little bit of a problem because I had a bit of a line. But I think it's important to show that it, it, it was a problem. I didn't like it, but this is how we rescue it. So I'm quite happy there. I just want a little bit more here. And it's important that all your paint is dry when you do this. Otherwise it will just blend. It won't pick up the texture. You do have to be careful because you sometimes lose the bristles on your brush. And you can keep going as long as you want. That's it, a bit more onto that corner. There we are. I'm a lot happier with that now. It's got a nice lot of texture. Included the bristles off my brush because my glue brush is starting to disintegrate um, but it's got a lot of layers which don't particularly show but they make for this great texture one last thing that I've just done and I absolutely love is to add some walnut ink powder and reactivate it now I've already done that on here but I'll show you you just need a little little bit of the walnut ink powder and hardly any at all you see I've hardly any on there at all and you just you don't dump a load of it you just put a little bit onto and I wanted a darker base so I've gone more walnut ink at, at the base and then I just spritz it with water and it activates it and as you can see hopefully it's very wet is this paper because it's been spritzed on twice now here the gesso is resisting the walnut ink so that it's popping out now I absolutely love that because it highlights the texture but if you haven't got walnut ink um, you could try walnut stain distress ink um, but it isn't quite the same thing um, so if you've got brushes in sort of like browns or Lindy's Magicals that are browns you could try that because as I say the gesso resists the powders and then it highlights it and that looks absolutely fab I know that a lot of the work that we've done is covered up, but that is mixed media, it is, it is what it is. We've lost the stamping here, but you can see a little bit of stamping there. I could always add some in later. You've got a little bit here, um, but I absolutely love that background and I think it'll be fab for something. I may turn it into a small journal cover, something like that. So you could even die cut it so that you got... Um, not flowers particularly but rustic elements die cut out of it and you'd get a lot out of there uh, you could create postcards ATCs the sky's the limit um, so I'm going to leave that now because I don't want to do any more at it because I love it as it is